What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Fudge Muppet, it's Scott here and today I'm back with a brand new Fallout build and this one was made possible by all of you fans. We love hearing you in the comments and there was a resounding call for this specific build and we're here to deliver. This is the Atom Cat. Turn the radio up, wipe the grease from your hands and rev your engines because the Atom Cat is bringing the cool back to Boston. No amount of radiation and no quantity of mutated monstrosities will be able to scuff the Atom Cat's perfectly polished suit of T60 power armor. When this guy isn't sweet talking women or chilling out playing pool, he's in his masterfully modified armor using explosive and deadly weapons to eviscerate his foes. If a ghoul so much as lays a gangly fingernail on his steel plate, he'll curb stomp them into the center of the earth. Before we get into this build, don't forget that the timestamp can be found just below in the description to help you find your way around the video but with that said let's get straight into the atom cat's backstory and basic values the atom cat was born in the suburbs of boston his mother stayed home to raise him and his two younger sisters while his father worked as a mechanic the atom cat always enjoyed when his father would take him into work the smell of grease and petrol and burned rubber was powerful and exciting and the sound of rock and roll playing on the radio completed the exhilarating experience he would pass his dad's tools and even help with some of the more menial tasks by the time the Atom Cat was old enough to drive a car, he knew them like the back of his hand. Barely a day had passed after receiving his license, and he'd already fully prepared and serviced the old beaten up muscle car that his father had given him. The Atom Cat's academic life had been quite mundane before then. He'd been a naturally gifted student, surprisingly intelligent for the son of a mechanic, but his true passion lied in physical labor. He preferred to see the fruits of his hard work in a tangible capacity. He'd rather fit a new exhaust and hear it purr than philosophize on the meaning of the obscure text created by some pretentious poet. The day the Atom Cat drove to school announcing his arrival with the powerful roar of his revamped engine, he was the center of attention amongst his peers. His friend group at school all had similar interests. In fact, their obsession for cars was only rivaled by their love of burgers, beer, and rock music. Each day after school, they would congregate at the local diner, making a show of their entrance and hoping to outclass one another with their impressively souped-up rides when pulling into the parking lot. Inside the diner, the Atom Cat had a specific ritual. He'd first slip a quarter in the jukebox, picking a song from one of his favorite rock and roll artists. He'd then be sure to get served by Ralph, the old Italian who ran the joint, as he seemed entirely unfamiliar with the custom of checking for identification before serving alcohol. After successfully getting a beer, he'd move the pool table where him and his friends would compete to determine who bought each round at the bar. It was a pretty straightforward and carefree experience for the Atom Cat and his friends, but one thing always seemed to distract him when he was there. In the corner of the diner every afternoon, sipping milkshakes and burying their heads in their textbooks, sat a group of girls from his grade. Always in the same spot, with her back to the window, facing the rest of the diner, sat a beautiful brunette named Nora. The Atom Cat tried to be inconspicuous when he glanced in her direction, but to him it seemed obvious when his eyes lingered on her for a moment longer than they should. He always hoped to catch her looking back, but he was sure that she considered him and his friends a little more than a noisy distraction from her studies. A few days later, driving home from the diner, the Atom Cat noticed Nora walking alone down the main road. His heart raced in his chest and he almost considered driving straight by, letting the opportunity slip, but he shook his head and swallowed his anxiety before pulling over and rolling down the passenger side window. He called out her name and she turned as if frightened by the hum of his engine and the probably too assertive call. He offered her a ride home and she hesitated hesitated before eventually smiling politely and getting in the car. The Atom Cat was overcome with nerves, but he managed to uphold his confident demeanor. Despite his attempts to make conversation, she seemed reluctant to engage with him. The Atom Cat had a sneaking suspicion that this girl wasn't particularly impressed by loud cars. Instead, he spoke to her about her work, which, thanks to the fact he wasn't as dim-witted as she probably assumed, went quite well. By the time he pulled up outside her house, she was even smiling. When she left, the Atom Cat felt high, and he was completely sober. The joyride home was one of the nicest he'd ever had in his trusty souped up old banger and the sun even peered out from behind the clouds to add some color to the world around him his mood must have been contagious the next day the atom cat was off his pool game even morty the one in the group with just enough hand-eye coordination to hold the cue was getting the better of him the atom cat suspected that this was because his eyes were glued to nora in the far corner of the diner to his friends he probably looked severely cross-eyed after an embarrassing defeat which was heralded by a 
baffled cheer from Morty, the Atom Cat dropped his cue on the table and told his other friend Jack to hold his beer. He walked with feigned poise to Nora's table and felt instantly intimidated by the hard stares he got from each of her friends. He figured that they were considerably less fond of his type than Nora was. He tuned out the glares which burned holes in the side of his head and directed his attention to Nora. He managed in one concise and impressively to the point sentence to ask Nora to the upcoming prom, and his morale instantly heightened from the skill of the delivery. Nora didn't smile and that was enough to send it plummeting again. She'd already been asked by one of their peers, one of the wealthy daddy's money types. The Atom Cat tried to will his face not to redden, but attempting to stop it only worked to exacerbate it. He played it off and made a typical comment about how lucky the other guy was and then made his way back to his friends. No one chimed up to kick him while he was down, except Morty of course, whose joke was cut short by a slap over the head from Jack. On prom night, the Adam Cat, Jack, Morty, and about seven other friends decided to skip the festivities with a drive through the forest. It was a perfect night and the roads outside the town would be dead quiet. Each of the guys brought their cars and a few girls had tagged along too determining whose car was best by choosing to be their passenger. The Adam Cat had outdone himself. His 30-year-old hot rod had the engine of a muscle car 40 years younger, and his flame decal added a lot to the aesthetic, and at least 10 miles per hour to the maximum speed. Or so he convinced Morty. They drove around and smoked for hours, and it was an incredible time. One of the girls had chosen to be the Adam Cat's passenger and, and stuck to him almost all evening. But around 7.30 when the prom would have started, the Atom Cat felt left out. He had all his friends around, but part of him wanted to see Nora. He found an excuse to leave and made his way back to town. When he arrived at the town hall, he spotted Nora sitting alone, her stunning blue dress pressed up against the dirty brick wall. She'd been stood up, with no explanation as to why. The Atom Cat made his way to her and put out his hand. Instead of going into the prom, he took her driving. She eagerly pulled off her heels and hopped in, and they drove to where the lights of the city stopped polluting the star-strewn sky. At some point that night, they fell in love. When school came to an end, Nora had to move to New York to study law, but they promised to wait for each other. The Adam Cat used this as a chance to join the military as a mechanic. After his tour had ended, Nora's degree was finished. She moved back to Boston, and they settled in Sanctuary Hills. After the nuclear fallout, the 200-year freeze, and the sight of his love's murder, the Atom Cat will understandably be out for blood and answers. His paternal instincts will kick in as he seeks out Sean. Eventually, the harsh environment will become a bit more bearable to him, although he will be constantly frustrated by the lack of cars in the new world. Despite his talent for all things mechanical, the cars on the streets of Boston are far beyond repair. Instead, he channels his love for modding vehicles into power arms. He'll pride himself on the sets he will wear as he journeys the Commonwealth. He will side with the Minutemen as he really isn't indoctrinated with the whole save the world ideologies of the other factions. The Atom Cat accepts the wasteland for being a grim and dreary barren plain infested with radiated creatures and flowerless trees. For that reason, he wants to focus on making things better locally, associating with good people who are down to earth and not quite so high and mighty. He'll help the Minutemen in the main story, but his heart lies with a smaller faction, one he'll stumble upon in his his travels. This faction is, of course, the Atom Cats. Upon meeting them, they'll show him the way of Cool, completely oblivious to the fact that the Atom Cat is already the king of Cool. Spending some time around these cool cats will help him regain his pre war charisma, and soon enough, he'll be the biggest charmer with the slickest hair in the whole Commonwealth. At the beginning of the game, the Atom Cat's special stats will be 4 strength, 1 perception, 5 endurance, 5 charisma, 10 intelligence, 2 agility, and 1 luck. The special book in Sean's bedroom will go into luck to help you get the scrounger perk nice and early. The first noteworthy stat of the Atom Cat is Charisma. Granted, it will start a little lacking at 5 points, but how can you blame a guy who's just watched his wife die and his son kidnapped? And on top of that, he's just woken up in a post-apocalyptic distant future. By the end of the game, this will reach 10 points and will be pivotal to his role playing and playstyle. He's always been a smooth talker and he gets along with just about everyone. This aspect of his personality will shine in his adventures in the Commonwealth and will work well with his new partner in crime. The other skill to mention is intelligence, and we know he's academically gifted with a passion for everything mechanical. With this stat, the Atom Cat will be prepared for modifying even the most high tech equipment. And with that said, let's look at the specific perks you take as you level up. First, we add strength, and even though the stat will cap out at 5 with a bobble head, it's still a very important stat. This is a skill that makes him proficient at modifying armor and carrying heavy meat grinding weaponry. 
From this stat line, take all ranks of armor for access to all ranks of armor mods, and then take all ranks of heavy gunner after acquiring the strength bobblehead. Heavy gunner makes your heavy weapons twice as powerful, also increasing hip fire accuracy and adding the opportunity to stagger opponents. Next, there's endurance, and we won't be taking any perks from here, but having a high base stat will make you tanky and formidable as possible. So put three points in here, which along with a bobblehead will bring the stat up to nine in the end game. When he isn't popping his collar and perfecting his pristinely greased hairstyle, he'll be using his charm to inspire affection and loosen up stingy merchants. From the charisma stat line, you'll want to invest a total of four perk points. Cap Collector is another useful perk which will massively improve prices when bartering. The final rank will allow you to even invest 500 caps to your favorite vendors to raise their buying capacity. The main reason to take this perk though is for how it works alongside local leader. This perk enables you to establish supply lines between your workshop settlements and even lets you build stores and workstations at those settlements. The cap collector perk allows you to invest in some of the better, larger stores. Finally, we have inspirational and with two ranks of this perk, your companion deals 20% more damage and has a bonus of 20 energy and ballistics resistance. One of your primary weapons is literally called spray and pray, so it's also handy that the second rank of this perk, you won't be damaging any of your companions. Up next, we have Intelligence, and we'll be taking quite a few useful perks from here. The first is Medic, and with two ranks of this, Stimpax and Rataway will be considerably more effective, 60% more effective to be exact, and then there's Gunnut and Science. Two ranks of Gunnut will give you access to the two necessary ranks of gun mods, while Science will give you access to all of the high-tech mods. Scrapper will help you and your workshop shenanigans, as you find yourself acquiring much more from salvaging weapons and armor. And lastly, from Intelligence, we have Nuclear Physicist. With this perk, Fusion Cores will last twice as long and you can eject them from your power armor like devastating nuclear powered grenades. You may not be very agile on your power armor, but with two points plus the bobblehead, you'll still be able to benefit from this stat line. And the commando perk specifically will make your automatic weapons twice as powerful, improve hip fire accuracy, and will give them a chance to stagger enemies. Lastly, there's luck, and similar to agility, there will only be three points in this stat, but that doesn't mean the Atom Cat isn't quite proficient when salvaging ammo and blowing heads off shoulders. From this stat line, all levels of scrounger will allow you to find much more ammo in containers and there's a small chance you'll gain free ammo when firing the last round of your magazine and then with three ranks of bloody mess your kills will be gloriously gory and you'll do 15% more damage across the board. At the end of the game the Adam Cat's special stats will be 5 strength, 2 perception, 9 endurance, 10 charisma, 11 intelligence, 3 agility and 3 luck. As for gear you want a unique variant of the Adam Cat's jacket and jeans called Zeke's jacket and jeans. You can get them after finishing the Adam Cat's quest and the outfit adds plus 1 to your charisma. Along with this put on some sunglasses and ensure your hairstyle is as greasy as possible for the complete rad lad aesthetic. On top of this, wear a full set of T60 power armor with Atom Cat paint. This paint increases charisma with all pieces painted and reduces AP cost for sprinting. Deck out this suit with a jetpack on the torso, kinetic servos on the legs, a blue headlamp, and the internal database on the helmet. With this fully souped up, the Atom Cat will be able to flaunt his armor like he used to with his old car. In terms of weapons, get an upgraded submachine gun and eventually get the spray and pray unique variant. And along with this, grab an upgraded flamer, preferably with the kneecapper effect to cripple legs. For this, you could absolutely use the legendary weapon Sergeant Ash, which can be bought in Arcadia in the Far Harbor DLC. As I mentioned before, the Atom Count will have a partner in crime who doubles up as a potential romance option. The companion will be the other smooth talker in the Commonwealth, Piper. Deck her out in Hot Rod T60 Power Armor, Helmet Optional, and increase her affection to get the Gift of the Gab perk, which definitely suits the role-playing. On the topic of role-playing, you can also take off your helmet when out of combat to seem a little less daunting and a little more approachable. Due to his affiliation with the Minuteman and his need for a garage where he can work on his power armor, the Atom Cat will put up time and effort into building lots of settlements. Just like the Atom Cats did with their Red Rocket petrol station, deck it out and turn it into the kind of place that the young Atom Cat would have hung out after school spread those Atom Cat vibes. And there it is, guys. If you're new to the channel, subscribe for more Fallout builds just like this and give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching our Atom Cat build. We're always blown away by the support you guys give us. As always, timestamps can be found just below in the description. There's also links to our social media accounts. Follow us there and keep up with us. I've been Scott, this has been Fudge Muppet, and I'll see you next time.